All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we got some, at least some clarity and some good news regarding the woman that was shot a few weeks ago. 51 year old died in Baltimore. If you guys haven't seen that video, did one on it about two weeks ago or so. It's so sad, but at least uh, there's finally been a rest made, and this kid was freaking 16 years old. How pathetic and how sad is that that you grow up? You're 16 years old, and you're going out and committing robberies and murders and stuff like this. It's so sad the way people grow up and like the what kind of group you have to be around to be 16 years old committing kind of stuff like this. It's sad and pathetic, and uh, but at least there's been some clarity and arrest has been made so let's kind of read through this article Cheryl McCormack 51 was killed during a botched robbery at her car when she ran out of gas doing DoorDash I know people said maybe she wasn't doing DoorDash it doesn't really matter she was a DoorDash driver she was out doing DoorDash it doesn't matter if she was really on a delivery at the time or not I don't really care she was a DoorDash driver she got killed trying to make money for her family you know anyways a Baltimore teen has been charged with the murder after authorities say he killed a woman who was delivering food for DoorDash. Sharon McCorbeck, 51, was accompanied by a friend while working the food delivery service on January 4th at around 2 a.m. Guys, I would highly suggest not doing deliveries at 2 a.m. Nothing really good ever happens after freaking 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., you know? So, probably not a safe time, and frankly, almost every sketchy situation I've ever been in happened around that time so it's probably just a better avoid delivering to people who are either drunk who are just straight up night crawler kind of people who are out delivering that late and just avoid those situations in total it says McCormick's friend set out to uh, find a gas station leaving McCormick at the car uh, the teen and another suspect allegedly approached the friend and attempted to rob him then police say they demanded he return to the car with them. When they arrived at the car, they demanded McCormick exit the vehicle. Police allege she refused to hand over her valuables and then shot her. The teen shot her and fled. She later died at the scene. Uh, detectives interviewed the witnesses and reviewed several surveillance cameras in the area. Earlier this month, they re released surveillance video in hopes of finding the two suspects this stuff is so sad man so sad authorities offered a five thousand dollar reward and honestly i thought five thousand dollars that's so ridiculously cheap but it did later lead to the arrest of the shooter shout out to whoever took that five thousand dollars and turned in that team but really you shouldn't if you know some information like that come on now is it really worth five thousand dollars just give up the information like I don't know anyways the teen turned himself in shortly after 12 30 a.m. on Wednesday according to W Bal blah 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 he's been charged with first-degree murder authorities had not released the name due to his age he has entered he has not yet entered a plea and is being held without bond it is unclear whether he has hired an attorney Turned himself in. I'm a little confused, but okay. McCormack was trained. McCormack was a trained paralegal who was in between jobs. So, like I said, delivery driving is like the ultimate transitionary job where you can make money and wait until you find like a job that you actually really like doing. Uh, DoorDash says they're deeply saddened by the loss of tragic life. Um. They always have like stock like things that they put out. Our thoughts are with McCormick's loved ones. During this imaginable difficulty time, McCormick's brother-in-law took to Facebook to pay her tribute. Um, blah, 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 blah. Cheryl had a heart of gold. I'm sure she did. Man, this type of stuff bugs the shit out of me, but this is why I don't deliver past I don't even go out past nine to be honest like once you're delivering with drunk crowds and like just being out like people are gen like generally 
the bad stuff happens at night and I personally would highly suggest to everyone if you can avoid delivering late at night you should like there's nothing worse than walking through a neighborhood that you don't know at one in the morning to try to find like an apartment complex or something like that like I have a specific situation where I was looking I was just walking through this sketchy apartment complex in Las Vegas and there's just these hoodlums all over the place just kind of staring at me smoking weed like looking maybe should we rob this guy and that that was like a moment where I was like you know what I'm not doing late deliveries anymore this stuff is just not worth it putting yourself in a sketchy situation it's like maybe it's not sketchy all the time but it can be very sketchy. You can go from delivering to a nice, rich neighborhood, double-gated community, and the next delivery could be to the hood. You never know. Like, it's not worth your life. It's not worth putting yourself in a risky situation. It's 7 to 10 bucks, you know, really, per delivery. It's not worth it. should be delivering during the daytime if you possibly can. I get it. If you absolutely are struggling for money, you absolutely have to stay out late. But it's not a good practice to be delivering super late and just being out super late in because it's just random. You're essentially rolling the dice who you're delivering to. And maybe it's not the customer you're delivering to. In this situation, it's just someone you happen to be happen to just come across, you know? And it can literally happen to anyone. I have to like it, it doesn't it, it could be, could have been a Navy SEAL that this happened to, you know? Like there's not much you can do. You're just putting yourself in random situations. And frankly, like, prayers for their family and hopefully they can get through this. And it's just such a sad, sad story. And, like, I wish it didn't happen and I wish it never happened to anyone. And I wish people didn't have to go out there and put themselves in sketchy situations to just make enough money to get by. She was 51 years old, you know? And it seems like this stuff happens all the time in Baltimore. This is the second one. Second or third one that happened in Baltimore. Man, Baltimore is, uh, they gotta step up their police force or something because this gang stuff just gets out of hand. And, you know, like cities like Chicago and LA and freaking Baltimore, it's not, it's not good. Stuff's not getting good nowadays. But, man, stuff bugs me. Anyways, at least they found the person that did it. I don't know, man. It's so sad. 16 years old. How pathetic is that? It's like, it's it's not even like, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not his fault, but it's like, when you're 16, you're so naive. And you, it's like, if you don't have proper parent figures in the household, you can just be put in like the worst friend groups. And I've literally firsthand seen kids go from being super innocent to next thing you know, they hang out with the wrong friend group. Then they're doing freaking drugs and all kinds of stuff borderline just doing gangster stuff you know like it happens all the time and it's just like the people you surround yourself with if you sound your surround yourself with five millionaires you're gonna become the six millionaire if you surround yourself with five crackheads you're gonna become the six crackhead it's just how it works so anyway stay safe safe out there guys if you guys want to subscribe to the channel and smash that i don't even want to say smash that like button anyways we'll see you guys in the next one Thanks for watching. Peace.